The Nintendo Switch has been out for over 7 years now. It sold over 110 million units and yet it is still worse than the previous batch of Nintendo consoles for one big reason. Creativity. The Nintendo Switch is a very uncreative and expressionless console and it's a good time we talk about it. Let's begin by expanding on what I'm actually saying. When I say the Switch is expressionless and uncreative, I am not talking about the software. The Switch has had some of the best Nintendo games released ever. Creative masterpieces like Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey come to mind when thinking of the Switch. It is a juggernaut in that regard. The area that the Switch seems wildly uncreative in is actually the hardware. The console is boring and bland. The Nintendo Switch is a console that could have and should have been wildly customizable and personalized for the end user. Unfortunately, it wasn't. The Nintendo Switch has one base color, gray. There were technically two different base editions, but the only thing that changed were the colors of the Joy-Cons. You could have red and blue, or you could have gray. Now, when they first showed the Switch, I figured there would be eventually a ton of special colors for both the console and the Joy-Cons. It'd be just like all the older Nintendo handhelds. And honestly, even a lot of the home consoles. But seven years in, and we just don't have that many consoles. As of today, there are 17 total limited and special edition versions of the Nintendo Switch. And almost all of them are just the normal color of gray. I will say some of the special editions do have different colored Joy-Cons, or maybe little patterns on them to make them a little bit different, but it's mainly just a lot of gray. Of all the special editions, only two really stand out. The Animal Crossing Switch, which comes with a pastel colored dock and the pastel colored Joy-Cons, and the Super Mario Red and Blue console, where the actual console is red, and it's one of the only consoles that is not just totally gray. Now, the Switch Lite, it does have more base colors, and this is very nice. But why can't we get these base colors on the regular Switch as well? I can commend Nintendo on their Switch Lite color selection, but I sure would have loved more colors for the Switch. This console had so much potential as a handheld to look incredible. And with that being said, let's take a look back at Nintendo's history with handhelds and how creative they have been. First, we gotta talk about the Game Boy. There was no expectation for this console because it was the first one. And yet, even without expectation, Nintendo still put out a ton of special Game Boy variants. There were 25 original Game Boy variants, and I'm not even counting the Game Boy Pockets or the Game Boy Lights. Now most of these, I will say, are just the original gray color with a special stamp or a marking on it. But a lot of these were very unique colors and materials. For example, the Manchester United Football Club Game Boy, which I didn't even know existed until I started researching for this video. There were six different base colors for the Game Boy. Red, blue, black, green, yellow, white, and blue. But I already said blue. Six. There's even a transparent Game Boy. I know what you're thinking. Well, there's a lot of gray and, you know, the, the colors were part of the Play It Loud series. So maybe that's not a good example. Well, let's give another one. The Game Boy Color. This was the next step in the Nintendo handheld experience. Not only did they add color to the actual games, but they added a big variety of color to the consoles themselves. The Game Boy Color had a ton of special editions and variants. They had eight different Pokemon Edition consoles. And while a few did share the primary color yellow, they all had different artwork, and some even had two colors. The Game Boy Color went far beyond only Pokemon collaborations as well. They had limited edition consoles for Cardcaptor Sakura, Hello Kitty, even Tommy Hilfiger. Were they limited? Sure. Were they hard to find? Of course they were. But they were creative, and they existed. There were seven basic colors for the Game Boy Color, seven more limited colors, and then on top of that, 17 special edition variants of the Game Boy Color. And this is not counting the Pokemon editions. Remember, there's eight more of those as well. So we start seeing a pattern, right? The Game Boy Advance. This was like taking three steps forward for handhelds. 
such a fantastic console. Again, plenty of base colors to choose from. 6. Personally, I think the orange one looks the best, but the indigo and the glacier were the most iconic. The Game Boy Advance had 5 limited edition colors, and Canada got the best one, the all red Game Boy Advance. Hello Kitty got another special edition console, and the King of Fighters console stands out the most as the best of all the special editions. The Mega Man Game Boy Advance had a very cool looking box, but the console uh, was a bit lacking. Of course, the Game Boy Advance got more than one Pokemon console, but less variations compared to the Game Boy Color. The last Game Boy I want to talk about is the Game Boy Advance SP. If the Game Boy Advance was taking three steps forward, then the SP was taking maybe like a half step forward. It completely changed the design of the Game Boy, and it set up its successor's design, the Nintendo DS. But before we talk about the DS, let's first talk about the SP. A very healthy seven basic colors for this console. Personally, again, I think the red stands out the most. It looks fantastic. Where the SP really stands out is having over 40 limited and special edition consoles. Everything from Zelda to SD Gundam. Donkey Kong got his own console. I don't think I've ever seen another Donkey Kong console, other than the 64. Anyways, Nintendo was giving everyone their own Game Boy Advance SPs. Naruto, Mega Man, Kingdom Hearts, even the Disney Channel. They also had beautiful retro editions based on the Famicom family of consoles. And you can't forget the Pokemon consoles. Arguably the best Pokemon console up to this point, the Pikachu Face SP. A fantastic spread for the SP, they stand at the top of the world of fun and whimsical console variations. And I'll say the Game Boy Micro, it deserves a few words as well, but you know, just a few. It was a very uniquely designed console, but my hands have always been too big. Now we can talk all day about the Nintendo DS, and I will probably make an entire video for it one day, but not today, because what I want to talk about today is the 3DS the final stop before the Switch. One thing about the 3DS family of consoles, it had some real variety. Almost every major Nintendo series would get their own limited edition console. Zelda, Mario, Pokemon, Fire Emblem, Super Smash Bros., Yoshi, Animal Crossing, even Metroid. Third party games would get limited consoles. Dragon Quest, Minecraft, a million different Monster Hunter consoles, even One Piece got two consoles. And I'm just scratching the surface. The 3DS, 3DS XL, and 2DS were doing great with how many different variants they had out. The 2DS even brought back the transparent plastic. Then Nintendo asked, what if we made a model whose appearance could be changed just by changing the faceplates? The base model new 3DS opened up a whole new world. You could collect faceplates and change what your entire console looked like. And although it didn't see a release in the US until much later, the base model new 3DS eventually made its way here. The new 3DS XL on the other hand came out earlier and with many more great special edition consoles. My favorite and the one that I have is the Majora's Mask new 3DS XL. They made some fantastic retro edition models based on the Super Nintendo and an always iconic Purple Galaxy Edition new 3DS XL. Nintendo even took it a step further with the limited new 2DS XL consoles. The Creeper, the Pikachu, and the Hylian Shield variants were all fantastic consoles. And now they're pretty valuable. The Pikachu Face new 2DS XL is selling for more than $600 online and the Hylian Shield for four to six hundred dollars. One of the last things I want to talk about is themes. The 3DS had some pretty great themes and the Switch has none. You can have light mode or you can have dark mode. That's it. Something that I think could have been added to really give the console a bit more flair, but it sadly never was. I say all of this to say I like the Switch. In fact, I love the Switch. My channel is full of Switch games, but they really dropped the ball on making the physical console fun and creative. I can only hope the Switch 2 brings a bit more personality back to the Nintendo handheld. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later.